Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. Yeah, so guys, today I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Maybe you've already read this, but it turns out that in the ongoing Pfizer study in Israel that they have found a possible link with a complication in people who have pre-existing autoimmune disease. So as you guys know, I have my own autoimmune issues, and I was very concerned about getting the vaccines. I am not an anti-vaxxer at all, but I also have a much more nuanced view on vaccines, and I think it is pretty widely accepted now that vaccines, they are meant to stimulate the immune system, and they can have some impact on autoimmune disease. Uh, it wasn't long ago before that was poo-pooed as just ridiculous, and now it's becoming pretty widely accepted. I know actually of a clinical trial that is going on right now being conducted at the University of, I think it's Oregon Health Science University, where they are looking at the impact of Shingrix, which is the shingles vaccine that has a powerful novel adjuvant, uh, because there is some suspicion that that powerful novel adjuvant, which is meant to uh, increase the immune system's response to the vaccine. Uh, there is uh, some speculation and some anecdotal evidence that it also boosts autoimmunity if that's what you've got going on on the menu that day. If your body is making autoantibodies, then that might get boosted too. And because there's been so much anecdotal evidence about that, they have put together a clinical trial, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about the results of that. But I do think that vaccines can stimulate the immune system like that, and that's why I am careful and I have a more nuanced view about vaccines. I've said in a video before that, for example, tetanus, and there are some other vaccines that in my opinion are a little bit over-recommended. The recommendations are a little bit overbroad, and I'm not giving any individual medical advice. Talk to your own provider about this. The data that's out there shows that the protection from tetanus shot lasts about 30 years. That's why in many developed countries in the World Health Organization's recommendation is that you have it done in childhood, a full series, and then once when you're 30 and once when you're 60, and then you're done. So I, instead of getting a a tetanus shot every 10 years or five years have I cut myself, I have my titers drawn. Now, if I got some kind of a really nasty, dirty puncture wound, yeah, I'd get a tetanus shot most likely. But in terms of just getting something as part of my regular routine, I get my titers drawn. The last time I had my titers drawn, I was very well protected. I still had something like 10 times the titers that I need in the blood in order to be immune. And so I, I passed on the tetanus shot. So sorry, I'm digressing a little bit. It's a tangent, but I do think that there's a not-so-distant drumbeat coming anymore. It's going to be hard to argue that vaccination does enhance the immune response. That's what it's for. And so there are implications with people who have autoimmunity. Now, I don't think that means you don't take a vaccine. I, personally, I think that's crazy, especially in light of COVID. COVID wreaks havoc. I personally wouldn't have gone unvaccinated against COVID for just about anything in the world. So I'm glad I got the vaccine. But Shortly after I got the vaccine, I actually did put something up in the Facebook group, and I was almost hesitant to put up in the Facebook group because I don't want to feed vaccine hesitancy, but I also want to be truthful. So I happened to get a case of shingles a couple days after my second Moderna injection. Now, I looked those up, cross-referenced them, didn't find anything at that time. A couple months later, because I'm a nurse anesthetist, so I got vaccinated really early, but a couple months later, I started looking and Googling and cross-referencing, and I turns out there were a handful of cases. And at that time, the CDC was saying, well, that's coincidental. A certain number of people get shingles in any given year anyway. It's a coincidence. Yeah, I kind of didn't feel like it was a coincidence, but, you know, whatever. So... Well, it turns out that the ongoing Pfizer study that I think we owe the Israelis just such a debt of gratitude in terms of all the data that they're collecting, they also found a cluster of shingles cases in people who got the Pfizer vaccine. Now, I got Moderna, but again, they're both messenger RNA vaccines. I think before long, we're probably going to be cross-referencing between them. But in Israel, they only use Pfizer, and they did find this cluster uh, that was represented in people with pre-existing autoimmune connective tissue disease and vasculitis. So it was mostly like people who had lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. It was a small cluster, so small that they said they couldn't really establish cause, but it was enough that it stood out. What they found is that these were uh, actually pretty young people, 30s, 40s, 50s. Shingles is more highly represented in elderly people. Um, I have had shingles before, so there is something about the immune system of somebody who has some autoimmune disease, particularly connective tissue disease, where your chances of getting shingles anyway are much higher, and that's a whole separate issue. It has nothing to do with the vaccines. But I just thought I would let you know what they came up with. 
And by the way, their study was reported in the journal Rheumatology. Now, one reason that we didn't see this coming, by the way, and I've mentioned this before, is that people with any kind of immune issues are usually excluded from clinical trials. And really autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, these are very common. And so that leaves a huge blind spot whenever clinical trials are over. And it leaves a lot of questions. And I had this question myself, what's going to happen with people who have autoimmune connective tissue disease? Now, one of the things they stated is that, and this should be very comforting, the incidence of eruption of shingles in patients who received the messenger RNA vaccine and also had the underlying autoimmune disease, it was 1.2%. So it's a very small percentage. Now they were either almost all or all women. I, I want to say they might have all been women. And, you know, the reason for that is really simple because autoimmune disease is overrepresented in women. So I just want to have a sidebar about that because I heard a news interview not so long ago where Brian Gumbel was interviewing some expert about long COVID. And long COVID is also overrepresented in women. And Brian Gumbel made some sort of a an, an accusation that perhaps this has... This is like a psychosomatic thing because we're seeing it more in women and not seeing it in men. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that we see more in women. Breast cancer. Men can get breast cancer, but yet it's highly overrepresented in women. And I don't think anybody wants to make the argument that breast cancer is psychosomatic. So, you know, I don't even want to go there. Um, the truth is that certain things are overrepresented in men, like pancreatic cancer, that's not psychosomatic, and other things are overrepresented in women. I have read that some people speculate that the reason autoimmune type disease, inflammatory diseases are overrepresented in women might be because estrogen plays some role in enhancing the inflammatory response. But we do know that connective tissue disease, so like lupus scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, is greatly overrepresented in women. So I would fully expect to see this phenomenon where they're finding that there's a slightly, very slightly, 1.2% increased likelihood of getting shingles after your messenger RNA shot if you have these underlying diseases. It's just very, very likely that's going to be in women. The good news is that none of these cases developed what's called post-herpetic neuralgia, which is one of the complications of shingles, where people have this ongoing terrible pain. It's nerve pain from nerve damage from the shingles. In this article where they reported the finding, nobody developed post-herpetic neuralgia. An obvious question is, well, were these people already vaccinated against shingles? Most of them were not, but they did have one who was vaccinated against shingles and yet still developed shingles after the messenger RNA vaccine. So why would this be? And there, all there is is some speculation at this point about why this might be. But I'm just going to go over some of the possible explanations that they come up with for why we might see shingles. Because shingles, again, is something that's usually impacting elderly people. The reason shingles is usually affecting elderly people is because there's an age-related decline in cell-mediated immunity. In addition to that, there is an age-related decline in the number of varicella-specific T-cells, but the patients in this report were all relatively very young. So one possible explanation, I'm just going to read it to you, is that shingles is already overrepresented in patients with autoimmune rheumatic disease. Like I said, this disease is about two times higher in people with rheumatoid than it is in the general population. So if you present with a background of pre-existing autoimmune disease, and particularly rheumatoid arthritis, you already have twice the chance of other people like you in the general population of getting shingles. In addition to that, a lot of people who have autoimmune disease are on immunosuppressant medications, including prednisone and other things that will suppress the immune response. And that is one of the things that makes them more susceptible to shingles. Because when you suppress the immune system so that the body won't attack itself, you're also suppressing the immune system's body to guard against other things. And that would include shingles. And then finally, there's something that they noted that's really interesting. And I don't think that all the dots are connected up into lines here, but I think they've got something here that's interesting. And I'll, I'll be interested to hear if this idea develops anymore. There might be some connection to the fact that COVID itself seems to have some kind of link with a shingles-like rash. Apparently, among all the other things you get, if you get COVID, some people who get COVID do develop a shingles-like rash. And we know that COVID 
does wreak some havoc with the immune system in some patients. So perhaps it interferes somehow with the surveillance that's always going on in the body when it comes to shingles. And that actually brings me to something else I've read recently about why do we see this uptick in shingles? Well, shingles used to be kind of, you know, it was rare. It was seen with advanced age. People got it like once and really didn't see it that often. And now it seems like there is a much increased incidence of shingles in recent years. And you know, there's a really interesting uh, perspective that I read as to a possible explanation for this. It goes like this. That was back when we didn't inoculate children against chickenpox. So my children were the first generation that were inoculated against chickenpox. In fact, it came out, the vaccine came out when my son, who's now 27, was about a year old. So both my kids are vaccinated. So largely, most of the kids running around today are vaccinated. Most of the 20 something year olds are vaccinated against chicken pox. So the theory that I read is that those of us who've had chicken pox and therefore can get shingles, because you can't get shingles unless you've had the chicken pox, right? The, the shingles is uh, an eruption of a rash that's a result of what was supposed to be dormant, lying dormant. It was left over from the chicken pox and it's kind of sleeps in your nervous system. And if your uh, immune system can't continue to suppress it, then you come out with a case of shingles. Apparently, when kids used to have the chicken pox, there was a certain amount of chicken pox all over the place in society all the time that you were coming into contact with. And that was reminding your immune system, oh, remember this? Oh, there that is. And so your immune system was constantly reacting to that and you were sort of exercising that immunity. And now that's not the case anymore. We don't run into that as commonly because most of the kids and young adults now are vaccinated against the chicken pox. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know. I thought that was interesting. You know, I debated about this video a little bit because I don't want to feed into vaccine hesitancy. Here I am, somebody that has a history of autoimmune disease and I came down with shingles. It was a mild case. I still think it's important to say what's true so that people can be adequately prepared and you know have their expectations dialed at realistic. But to my mind, it is just unequivocal. Not only was it best for me to get vaccinated, I'm gonna get on my soapbox a little bit here. We kind of have to think about our whole community and our whole world. And really until everybody's vaccinated, I think this thing will continue to mutate and we'll have new variants. And I, I just think that the vaccinating our way out of it is the only way out of this. So I would do this again a hundred times. If you do have some kind of an autoimmune flare, that can be treated and you can go back to living your life. In fact, in the article that I'm discussing today um, in the Israeli study and all the cases that where people came down with shingles, most of them didn't have a flare of the autoimmunity, but a few did and it was put right back into remission. So that can all be treated and um, a lot of the sequelae from COVID really can't. So I'm glad I did this. I hope it's not too discouraging for people in terms of you know, whether they wanna go ahead and get vaccinated. I would think if you're watching my channel, you're probably getting vaccinated anyway. I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was so interesting, especially since you know I had experienced that so early on. And in a way, it was almost like satisfying to hear that yes, this is an issue. It wasn't just me or some weird fluke. So let me know if that's helpful. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.